Assalamu alaikum wa My name is John Fontaine and welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We joined with Dr. Muhammad Salah again. Jazakallah khair. Thanks for joining us, Sheikh. Jazana wa iyyakum. Thank you, John. You know, subhanAllah, it's been a long series so far, subhanAllah. And last time we were speaking about, you know, trying to resolve some of the issues within marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, after marriage, it can get a bit tough, get a bit stressful. But the couple have tried their best to reconcile between each other. They've also asked for outside help. Mm -hmm. But they've decided between themselves, or even maybe one of them have decided that they can no longer carry on, sadly, with this marriage. Now, of course, I'm from a Christian background. And uh, from the Catholic background, it's not permissible to get divorced. Um, of course, but I was from the Church of England background before I became a Muslim, <laughs> and it was it was allowed. Uh, Henry VIII. Alhamdulillah the, for guiding you to Islam. Alhamdulillah, I became a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. But as we say in Islam, mm. it does permit that it is permissible uh, to have a divorce uh, after marriage. But what are the different types of divorce? What's the difference between a talaq and a khula or, or separation? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi wa Mustafa wa ba'd. In the Quran, the Almighty Allah explained, prescribed, and discussed in details, whether in Surah Al-Baqarah or other surahs, there is a whole surah in the Quran, it's called Surah At-Talaq, or divorce. The permissibility of divorce, and sometimes it becomes simply recommended, okay? So the general ruling of divorce in Islam, it's permissible whenever it is the last resort. It's simply unimaginable to get stuck with somebody whom you're supposed to share bed with to the rest of your lives and you and her hate each other. Mm. There must be separation. This is logically. And alhamdulillah, shukrullah, logic and Islam and Sharia are having harmony and they go hand in hand. So we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribing divorce whenever it is the only solution. And there are different types of separation. I'd like to begin by explaining them. Divorce, which is separation through the husband divorcing his wife. Mm. And separation through the judge or the shara. Mm. And the khula is separation based on the request and the demand of the wife. Mm. In the case of divorce, when the husband offers or utters the word divorce or texts or says or types that is an effective divorce as long as he is in his mindset and also this kind of divorce has different categories and there is the halal and the haram and the sunni and the bid'i and in the case of the fasq which i'd like to begin by explaining it is the authority of the judge and in this case in the case of fasq the husband does not utter divorce because he doesn't want to but uh, his will is of no use because when the judge separates them the husband cannot take her back it becomes irrevocable mm. okay even yeah. if she wants to they would have to uh, process a new marriage mm. contract so whether he wants to divorce or not if the judge decided separation that's called fasq which is annulling the marriage contract as if it did not take place. It mm. happens due to various reasons. But obviously, this fast would not be achieved unless if the wife presents a case before the judge, before the imam, or before those who are in a charge. Like she says, my husband abstained from Islam, separation. Mm. She says, you know, my husband has not been providing for me and my kids, does not even a single penny for the past couple years and he doesn't have he doesn't want to look for a job and he's just living like enjoying the free ride on my money are you going to work are you going to provide no okay divorce her no i don't want to divorce her mm. so the judge has a right to mm. make a uh, separation mm. and also in the case of in the case of god forbid accusing each other of the act of adultery particularly if he accuses her then in this case, if he doesn't have witness, they resort to something called li'an, and there will be separation. And in the case of the separation, the wife keeps the dowry, keeps her gifts, keeps everything that the mm. husband gave her, and there is no return. Mm. 
because it's irrevocable. While in the case of divorce, when the husband utters the word divorce, the Almighty Allah says, وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءَ This is an ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. In this ayah, Allah says, المطلقات, plural of المطلقات, women who have been divorced, يَتَرَبَّصْنَ They gotta wait, hang on, do nothing for three periods, three okay. ministrations before the marriage is annulled or the separation is complete or before she can even accept new marriage proposals because so she is still married to that person. So it's not an immediate, so, so even after any of these uh, options, Inshallah, there would be a waiting. Inshallah, we're going to explain all of that. But after the husband utters the word divorce, there is a idda. Mm. What is the idda? It is a term during which the wife must stay at home in the same house mm. in which she was living with her husband. Mm. Then he divorced her. He doesn't kick her out. Mm. And that is the beginning of Surah At-Talaq. Mm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Number one, Ya ayyuha ladheena aman, Iza talaqutumun nisa'a, Fatalliquuhunna li'iddatihinna, that is the first ruling concerning talaq. Also, people who want a divorce, they have to learn the ahkam of divorce. They, mm. they don't just give divorce whenever they want to. Mm. As Allah the Almighty require you to learn the ahkam of marriage, mm. consummation of the marriage and sexual relations and halal and haram mm. and the rights of the spouses, you also must understand mm. that you have duties. During the life of the Prophet وسلم, one of his great, great companions, the son of a great companion, Abdullah, the son of Umar ibn Khattab, radiyallahu an, had a dispute with his wife and he decided to divorce her. So he did divorce her. Mm. But when he divorced her, she was in her menses. Mm. So Umar ibn Khattab went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and he told him what happened. My son, Abdullah ibn Umar, now Abdullah ibn Umar is considered the Prophet's brother-in-law, even though he's, he's a young man way younger than the Prophet ﷺ. But the Prophet ﷺ got angry and he said, Murhu, falyurajiaha. Order him to take her back because this divorce is haram. Mm. To divorce one's wife during the menses is haram. Mm. Why? Because during the menses and the hormonal changes that the woman is going mm. through, she needs care. She needs emotions. She needs attention, mm. not pressure, Sheikh, not anger. Sheikh, someone may ask, although it's haram, is it still an, act, an actual divorce? Would it still be recognized? There is a difference of opinion between mm. the scholars, whether even though it's haram and, and innovation, whether it's effective or not. Mm. Based on their understanding of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Murhu fal Order him to take her back. So it didn't explain. So mm. there is still a difference of opinion. Mm. But what matters here is you shouldn't mm. divorce mm. your wife whenever yeah. she, she's having the menses. And likewise the PMS because mm. of, you know, the, the, the kind of changes that she's going mm. through and the psychological mm. pressure. So you, you have to understand that give her a break. So how many times can, is it permissible to divorce your wife? That's another thing. The Quran says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu He is addressing whom? The believers. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu Udha talaqatum un nisa'a So if you are one of the believers and you happen to have a dispute between you and your wife then talaquhunna li'iddatihinna Either you wait until she finishes the period then divorce her or if since you had, she had her last period you didn't have sexual relations then you can divorce her during any time of the tuhr. Mm. Why? Because there is no possibility of uh, conceiving. Mm. She, she, you guys did not actually have sexual relations mm. during this time. ثُمَّنْ يُطَلِّقْهَا فِي طُهْرٍ لَمْ يُجَامِحَا فِي If he still wants to divorce her, mm. the Prophet ﷺ said to Umar Khattab, he's got to wait until the period is over and without having sexual relations with her, mm if he still insisted on divorcing her. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, there is a great divine wisdom in that. In addition to giving the woman the break because of the hormone changes during the menses, 
uh, also and the weakness a lot of bleeding and so on also it gives you a chance and a time to think over mm. and it gives her a chance to think about her mistakes if she've done mm. any and the consequences of giving divorce mm. and in many 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 cases that if the divorce is delayed or mm. postponed even for one mm. hour it will not take place so Sheikh, because mm. it's like prison whenever mm. it's hot when you diffuse the problem mm. and think it over you may change your mind and this is most of the time as a matter of fact mm. so the question you asked earlier about the number of divorces mm. it was answered in the ayah wal mutallaqatu yatarabbasna bi anfusihinna thalathata quru Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab had a case now, he, now he's learned somebody divorced his wife in the same setting three times you're divorced you're divorced you're divorced where I divorce you three times. He was very angry with him because now Abdullah ibn Umar knows what is right and what is wrong. And said, you disobeyed Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and your wife had been divorced. But how many divorces? We'll talk about that, inshallah. Inshallah. We, when you we come, just, come. Yeah, we'll take break. a short break and then we'll come back to that. Join us after the break. We'll be back in a few minutes with the fiqh of love. Assalamu alaikum salam. My name is John Fontaine and welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. Assalamu alaikum Shaykh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Shaykh. We, we're just speaking about divorce, you know, subhanAllah. Just before the break, we were mentioning about divorcing. Uh, you mentioned an example of one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu When a case is presented before Abdullah ibn Umar, yeah. somebody divorced his wife three times simultaneously. So we say that is haram. It's haram to divorce one's wife while she's having the menses. It's haram to divorce one's wife three times or more than once, mm. uh, twice or thrice in the same sitting. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated also in Surah Al-Baqarah, الطلاق مرتان فإمساك بمعروف أو تسريح بإحسان So in the first ayah which we discussed, ayah number 228 المطلقات يتربصن بأنفسهن ثلاثة قروء Look, it's like a symphony. The ayat are here and there in Surah Al-Baqarah and in Surah Al-Talaq organizing and regulating how talaq should be performed and observed. And if you were to follow this divine prescription on talaq, most likely you will reconcile. If you avoid divorcing your wife during the menses. Mm. And if you divorce her once, mm. and that is the first time, then Allah says, Al mutallaqatu yatarabbasna bi anfusihinna thalasata quru. You have three periods, mm. which could be more than two months. And in the other ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And for those who do not witness the period, like let's say that due to anything, including the menopause, ثَلَاثَةَ ashhur, Three months, lunar months. So this is plenty of time. Yeah. What happens during this time? You travel to uh, Disney and you enjoy yourself and your wife is with her family. No, 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 don't give the shaitan a chance to bombard her and to bombard you and, you know, to keep charging both of you against each other. Mm. Now we go back to Surah Al-Talaq, the first ayah. Allah the Almighty says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ Fear Allah your Lord. He's addressing whom? O oh, the Prophet, tell the believers. Why did Allah give the power of talaq to men? Number one, Men have the right to give talaq. Women have the right to demand talaq. But as far as the authority of officially giving talaq, once you say you're divorced and it becomes effective, it is the man. Mm. Why the man? Why can't the wife say to her husband, you're divorced, you're divorced, and then they're divorced? Mm. Hmm? Why? Because a woman is emotional. And this is not something bad at all. I'm talking about being by nature emotional women mm. because this is needed for the children to raise mm. the kids to be the sweet part of the family mm. okay but the man 
whom we talked about, he paid the dowry, mm. he bought the house, mm. and he's paying for the furniture and all the expenses and the jewelry and the car and the school tuitions and everything. He's shouldering a huge financial responsibility. And he understands that if he's divorcing his wife, a lot of change is going to take place mm. to the worst. Yeah. When all what he paid is gone, the house will collapse. The children will be separated from the parents mm. or the parents will not be looking after the children uh, in the same house. A lot of problems. So mm. he will think it over and over and over so many times. Mm. But now I want to ask a question. How many times even in acts and movies you hear that the wife is demanding divorce? Mm. A lot. Mm. The wife asking the husband, divorce me, divorce you know, me, you know, I hate this you. Is, this is really common. You know, we get uh, people saying that their wife keeps asking for divorce all the time. What do you, what do you say about this? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, if a woman were to ask for divorce, مِنْ غَيْرِ مَا بَأْسٍ أَيُّ مَمْرَأَةٍ سَأَلَ الطَّلَاقَهَ فِي غَيْرِ مَا بَأْسٍ فَحَرَامٌ عَلَيْهَا رَئِحَةُ الْجَنَّةِ it will be forbidden for her to find the fragrance of paradise. Oh, wait a minute. So it's not a joke. It's either there's something serious that really deserves asking for divorce mm. or fasq or even khula mm. or you're joking. Mm. And that's why when they say it, the guy, the husband has to let go. Mm. Has to say, okay, we'll think about it. When I come back, I'm going to pray then when I come back. During this time, mm. change your position, make wudu, uh, offer two rakahs, leave, you know, because if you hang around and she keeps mm. pushing in prison, if you're a man, divorce me. If you're a real man, divorce mm. me. And then mm. you just say you're divorced. So the shaitan mm. have achieved his goal so, and broke the family. Mm. So, Sheikh, you said that you have this, uh, this, this period of time after the talaq, after, after the man has said divorce, um, what happens if he wants to take her back within this period? Does he, does he need uh, like another uh, You know, John, if contract? he followed the ayah of Surah Al-Talaq, the first ayah, eventually he will take her back. Hmm. The ayah says, O the Prophet, tell the believers, اتقوا الله ربكم في الله your Lord لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن What happens whenever there is divorce, he says, go to your family. Hmm. Or, he will pack up and he would leave. Okay? I'm not coming home anymore. Manage your own business. No, Allah doesn't want that. Allah wants them both to stay in the same house. Sheikh, but they are divorced. I know. That's why this is a talaq maratan. After the first and the second divorce. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يحل لهن أن يكتمن ما خلق الله في أرحامهن. So there is a waiting period. During this time, there is a possibility of reconciling. Mm. How would they reconcile? Well, they're not sharing bed anymore. Mm. He's staying in one room and she's staying in one room. They just bumped into each other. He's leaving, going to work, and uh, or she's getting up to fix the kids to the school. So he's leaving. And even though she's divorced, she prepared his breakfast. Mm. So he just realized you're too sweet, even though I divorced you, but you care about me, I'm really sorry. And he gives her a kiss or a hug. That officially means he has revoked his divorce. It doesn't have to be a written statement. Hmm. It doesn't have to call somebody and say, you guys bear witness, I revoked my divorce, I took my wife back. Hmm. But according to Imam Abu Hanifa, anything which only a husband do to his wife, sexual intercourse, kissing, hmm. hugging, you know, mm. all kind of, uh, you know, relationship between all of the husband and wife announces revoking the divorce and they become officially united mm. once again. Mm. No need for a new marriage contract. Mm. No need. No need for a new dowry. No need. But if you buy her mm. a gift, that would be super nice. Mm. No need for informing her dad or getting his mm. permission because she's again. still officially your wife. So, Sheikh, what happens if the time runs out? you know, this, this, this period of time runs out and you want to get married again? Well, now, the ayah says, following couple ayahs, it's basically 231. The Almighty Allah says, 
بمعروف ولا تمسكوهن ضرارا لتعتدوا so if you are planning not to take her back and divorce was based on reasoning understanding and an agreement between you and her so even though she's staying in the same flat but you decided to let go so the period of uh, the term the idda elapsed and you did not take her back that is called tasrihun bi ihsan kindly here are your rights the child support if there is any the bridal gift if i owe you anything deferred amount of dowry you know divorce mm. with kindness mm. divorce on the basis of kind treatment mm. after the divorce after the idda is over she's free to look for somebody else mm. and she's free to marry somebody else and accept and receive proposals but in this case now she has to move out of the house if it is not her house or he has to move to another house if that is her house mm. because now they're not husband and wife so after the idda is over allah says la yahillu lahunna an yaktumna ma khalaqa allah fi arhamihin the husband who divorced his wife must tell her I divorced you and here is the date so that she would keep count. One of two things, whenever whichever one happens first, then the divorce is complete. And it will be either irrevocable period forever or irrevocable unless if you uh, process a new marriage contract. Mm. What are the two things and whichever one from comes first? that will make the, the divorce complete and final the first is if she is pregnant and she gives birth mm. if she is pregnant and she gives birth let's say that he divorced her they were going to the hospital for delivery and they picked up a fight so let's say that he divorced her then she just gave birth an hour later then the idda is over mm. whichever one comes first the finishes the idda uh, if she's not pregnant then the idda will be three periods what if she was pregnant and they found out after divorce that she's pregnant she just got pregnant and that pregnancy was last for, would last for nine months so the idda will be prolonged until she gives birth mm. if then if she is not pregnant the term for a woman who's divorced is three periods but if she's pregnant then the term will be to deliver okay. the baby. Sheikh, you know, uh, it's common, I get many questions on Facebook and social media where people are saying that the man has said talaq or he's, he's done divorce. It, maybe he said it and he's joking or maybe he said it and he, he didn't mean it. Well, no joking when it comes to divorce. Keep in mind, among the things which there is no joking about it, even if you're joking, uh, it, it, it becomes effective. Marriage and divorce. You say mm. to somebody, I want to marry your daughter, and she says, yeah. And he says, no problem, that's marriage. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you don't say, we were acting, I was joking. I, uh, you know, I thought, I didn't think it would be that easy. And also somebody, <laughs> uh, his wife says, if you're a man, divorce me. Yes, of course, I'm a man, you're divorced. Then he comes to the sheikh or he asks you and he said, I didn't mean it. I was just threatening her. Habibi, that's an effective divorce. Mm. And that's why the authority of uttering and pronouncing the, divor the divorce was given to the man mm. who is responsible. Okay. Mm. So this is the kind of divorce where a talaq maratan. If he divorced her for the first time, and mashallah, because he fulfilled what Allah said, يا أيها النبي إذا طلقتم النساء فطلقوهن لعدتهن وأحصل عدة واتقوا الله ربكم لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن ولا يخرجن إلا أن يأتين بفحشة مبينة. So he said to his wife whom he just divorced, you know what? You're the mother of my kids. I divorced you, but Allah said you must stay in the same house. Here is the key. We're divorced. He's staying in one room, she's staying in one room. And then a week before the term is over, they reconcile. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Now left for him one more divorce. If in another incident he divorced her, he has the right to take her back. And if he happened to divorce her for the third time, that's it. Mm -hmm. 
فلا تحل له من بعد حتى تنكح زوجا غيره and that is something to be discussed in depth next time inshallah Sheikh that's what we have time for today thank you for joining us and subhanallah next time I want to go into more detail about this because this is a very important topic sure. and this is often misunderstood you know there's, there's situations where people they think they're married and in, in, in actual fact they may not even be married so inshallah we'll pick up where we left off next time join us next time for another episode of the Fiqh of Love that's all for today Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh